there, it's Lara here with Witchy Wednesday for the week of August 8th to 14th, 2018. Thanks for being here. Um, there's a lot to talk about today in the video in terms of this last of three eclipses that's happening on August 11th in Leo. So I won't spend too much time with the preamble, but I just want to say that I really do appreciate, you know, as always, your interactions and you know your comments subscribing to the channel likes sharing with your friends and family who um, you think might be interested all of that kind of thing I really do appreciate it and if you want to get a personal reading with me then you can find out how to do that at the link below in the description box here so I'm back home <laughs> from an extended stay at uh, at camp or cottage or cabin or whatever you call it in your neck of the woods. Um, and although that sounds wonderfully relaxing, it was, um, you know, not, not a lot of lounging around by the water, uh, reading books and uh, sipping cocktails. It was uh, quite busy, but in a good way. It was really, really full of a lot of... Um, togetherness with family and uh, and friends so which was really fantastic um you know but I'm also feeling really drained as a result because people who are you know particularly people who are rather sensitive and sensitive to energy and and uh, a bit introverted um all of those things describe me you know after that level of um being among the people it it can be quite exhausting and i've learned that over time so this time i've i've had a bit of an easier time bouncing back than in the past just because i was super aware of of the impact that that could have on me potentially and uh you know i had a bit of an easier time going with the flow and that's largely i think um associated with the eclipse that happened on the 27th um, in uh, in Aquarius for me anyways because of where it fell in my in my chart that kind of thing so you can you can see how this plays out in real life right when we're talking about the astrology here and so last week's video I talked to you about Uranus retrograde that was one of the things I covered it was a bit of a shorter video because I recorded it just before I left um, for holidays and uh, we were between eclipses again but I did talk mostly about Uranus retrograde which um, happened on the 7th yesterday and where that impacted each of the signs so if you're interested in that go back and watch last week's video and you can find out more information about that and so like I said th the majority of the time I'm going to spend here on this week's video is talking to you about the eclipse that's happening in Leo at, at 18 degrees Leo on August the 11th so this Saturday and it's at about 5 58 a.m that's eastern time so you have to adjust accordingly for where you live right so this is the last of the three eclipses that are um, are transpiring this eclipse season right as I've said in, in past videos normally there's only two eclipses this eclipse season there are three and this is the last of those three um, the other thing is this is the second last eclipse that is happening on this Leo Aquarius axis of eclipses so eclipses happen in pairs and in cycles like that and so the first of this Leo Aquarius eclipse cycle started in uh, 2016 July 2016 I believe um, oh maybe it was August 2016 and it will end in January I think it's January 19th around there anyways 2019 so that will be the last in the series of Leo Aquarius eclipses for for quite a while and we will start to move more fully into the energy of the Cancer Capricorn eclipses um, which began you know two eclipses ago like not not the one on the 27th but the one that was previous to that um, June I can't remember the exact date right now but 
So um, that's where we're at right now. So I, I want to just give you a little bit of foundation, I guess, in terms of what's happening in relation to this eclipse. And then I'll, I'm going to go into more details about specific things, talk about, um, you know, some other energies that are playing in to, to these, to the eclipse. And then also at the end of the video, like I've been doing for the last many videos now, I'm going to speak to each sign and where this eclipse is falling for you to give you a little more insight, right? Of course, as I always say though, <laughs> If you want to get really specific about things, then having a look at your own personal birth chart is, is the way to do that, right? This is a general kind of reading. But uh, if you listen for your rising sign, largely, and also your sun sign and your moon sign at the end, that will give you different layers of information um, and help you sort of help shine a light on where this could be impacting you, right? So um, this eclipse again 18 degrees leo it's happening um conjunct so so cl close together in the sky with mercury which is mercury's retrograde right now um and also it's in what we call a square right a conversation of of tension with jupiter in scorpio and the other thing that's happening is you don't hear me talk about the asteroids too much, right? Occasionally I mention Lilith and that's because I am by no means an expert on the asteroids, but they do definitely play a significant role. And I think astrologers are finding out more and more how, how significant a role, right? And so this is happening in also in conjunction. So meeting up very closely in the sky with asteroid Pallas Athena. So I'm going to, talk a little bit about that because I did a little research on it so I can share that with you and what that means right so I want to start by talking about the Leo Aquarius axis so as you've heard me mention before signs have partners so the so it's kind of like the opposites it's like opposite sides of the same coin right so for example Pisces and Virgo are opposite the chart each other. So they are on the same axis and they seem opposite in many ways, but they have a lot of commonalities and well as well. And so the merging or the balancing of those energies makes for the optimal blend kind of thing. And so Leo and Aquarius, where these eclipses have been falling, are opposite each other, the chart, right? So this is about the heart, Leo, and the mind, the higher mind specifically, Aquarius. It's about, it's like the axis of creativity in many ways, right? Like the heart-centered, passionate creativity of Leo, and then the higher mind centered sort of flashes of genius, flashes of insight, um, creativity of Aquarius. Leo is, both have a focus um, on being unique in some way, right? Being individual in some way, but they are, um, like that plays out differently. So, Leo likes the spotlight on them. They like to be center stage kind of thing um, and really recognize for their own unique gifts. And Aquarius likes to be recognized as part of, as, as part, I was gonna say as part of the crowd, but not really because Aquarius is more, is a bit of a rebel, right? So it's more like Aquarius likes the group that they are part of to be recognized. That's a better way of saying it. Um, you know, Leo sees things clearly from their individual perspective, where Aquarius sees things more from a bird's eye view. Um, I have some kind of construction happening outside my house all of a sudden, so I'm hoping that that's not too loud and it's not uh, too much of a distraction for you. Um, also, Leo is more attached 
to what other people think of them, to how um, how they appear, you know, to their to their reputation, to how they are being um, appreciated. Whereas Aquarius is is much more detached, not really concerned about the opinions of other people, right? They they have a tendency to kind of think that their their opinion is the opinion or the truth kind of thing. And so the key here is to balancing those two energies, right? And meeting in the middle somewhere. So these these energies if they're if they're blended appropriately, they really complement each other. So that is where the focus of this eclipse cycle, again, that began in 2016, has been. And depending on where Leo Aquarius falls in your chart, like which house, that's where you will be feeling this um, the most, right? And of course, if you are a Leo ascendant um, or an Aquarius ascendant or, you know, sun or moon in either of those signs, any if you have a bunch of planets in um, any of in either of those signs you're going to be feeling this um, more than the rest of us kind of thing and I just went through the eclipse cycle previous to this one was Virgo Pisces and so I am a Virgo rising and a Pisces sun and so that eclipse cycle of a couple of years was pretty intense for me right whereas I find that this cycle um is a little less intense, a little less profound. I'm still feeling it, but it's a little different, right? So um, at an eclipse, this is going to be a solar eclipse, a partial solar eclipse. So it's this is a new moon that's happening in Leo. And it's the moon passes between the earth um, and the and the sun, right? And but it partially, in this case, darkens the sun because it's a partial solar eclipse. So it's like, you've heard me say before, it's like the light's going off and back on again, right? And new moons in general represent new beginnings. With an eclipse, this is intensified. It's like a really um, powerful new moon. And when the sun and the moon meet up in the sky, which is... A new moon right a full moon is when they're opposite each other in the sky but when the sun and the moon meet up in the sky they're coming together in a really powerful union to birth to create something new and um so with an eclipse this is really profound and it's like with an eclipse like this it's like we get to see all the possibilities and so it can be a bit overwhelming um in some ways all the possibilities of what could be new for us, of what new things we can um, initiate and instigate in our lives, right? And the effects of an eclipse tend to last about six months. And so the solar eclipse that will be finishing up this Leo Aquarius cycle of eclipses is happening in January 2019. And so we are we will see the, um, you know, that final um chapter i guess if you will in the story that's been playing out for us um so i mentioned to you that the eclipse is happening in a conjunction with mercury and so that puts the focus on our communications and our thinking um on our thoughts and ideas that kind of thing um but because Mercury is retrograde, it may complicate those things, right? And it might delay those matters in some way. It might make us feel a little anxious as well. But be patient. You know, being patient is the key, not acting uh, rashly or impulsively. Just knowing that something new and positive is unfolding and you don't have to have all the answers right now and you don't. You don't have to, um, you don't have to have it all figured out, right? So just if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed and your, your thinking is a little anxious, um, 
you know, or communications are anxious, that kind of thing, then just take a step back, you know, think before you, you speak, think before you initiate something new. It's a good time to sort of, for the planning phases, when Mercury is retrograde, or the reviewing of what needs tweaking, um, but not necessarily to kind of launch into something new, right? So, um, the time is going to be right, sort of end of end of August and and into fall for really moving forward with new beginnings, and I'm going to talk. But about that in a minute. But what else I want to say here is, so I, I mentioned to you that the eclipse is happening in square to Jupiter, right? In square to Jupiter in Scorpio. And just a, a little bit about that. Um, it, that may have us kind of exaggerating or a little bit, um, because it's, you know, the eclipse is happening in Leo, maybe overly prideful, overly confident, um, overly arrogant, maybe in some way, but if we if we tap into that, if we're if we're aware of that tendency, then we can temper that, and it is a time for for being proud of ourselves for 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 really wanting to um, to shine our light and perhaps be recognized right for our special gifts that kind of thing. Um, but the square to Jupiter just says, don't, you know, don't go overdo it. Don't go over the top. Um, so I, what I was thinking about when I was thinking about this, this eclipse and this, this particular conversation with Jupiter, I think it's really about being that true king or queen, right? Of your own life. And if you think of the you know, the qualities of a true king or queen that's acting in their highest, at their highest vibration kind of thing. Um, you know, we're talking about acting with integrity and loyalty and wisdom and benevolence, right? And courage and, um, and grace, really. So those are the, so there's, those are some key words for you to, to mull over during this eclipse season. Um, and then I mentioned to you that the eclipse was happening in close conversation in a conjunction with an asteroid called Pallas Athena. So I did a little research on this and um, Jamie Partridge is an astrologer known as the Astrology King. And he approaches, he, he does a lot of work with, um, with the asteroids and the fixed stars. And so he's a bit of um, an expert on this. And so I just, I'm going to read to you a quote from what he wrote, but I really do want to um, give him credit, right, for, for this, because this, these are not my words, they're his. And I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see better. But okay, so what he says is, Pallas Athena signifies wisdom, courage, just warfare, strategy, and skill. She rules creative intelligence, pattern recognition, um, and the relationship between father and daughter. Like Wonder Woman, her father was Zeus. She's a feminine character with all the strength of Superman, plus all the allure of a good and beautiful woman. As beautiful as Aphrodite, Aphrodite wise as Athena, stronger than Hercules, and swifter than Hermes. Pallas deliberates to find the truth before, before passing judgment and taking action. She's defensive by nature and will use her creative and strategic intelligence. I also see that in creative Leo, strategic intelligence, Mercury, right, is involved in this eclipse too, um, to avoid violence. But when all else fails, she will take action. So I think that's really interesting to note here. And, and we may see the impact that Asteroid Palace has on the collective, maybe more so than on our individual lives. So it'll be interesting to see what's happening, you know, on the political front um, and, and in terms of social, social justice, that kind of thing. Um, so before I go into talking about how this eclipse is going to impact each of the signs, I just want to 
mention a couple of other things. One is that Mars retrograde will be entering Capricorn on August 12th. And so that's going to give us a chance to clean up anything that was sort of left over from Mars's transit through Capricorn, right? Because it moved out of Capricorn and um, into Aquarius. And now it's doing a little backtracking through through Capricorn, um, through the latter degrees of Capricorn. So, you know, we may look to wherever Capricorn falls in our chart and see if there's any loose ends that need tying up there. It will give us a chance to do that. We have in August, you've heard me mention this throughout the, the videos over the summer, that there are many, many planets retrograde. An unusually high number of planets are retrograde over the summer. And in August, we have um, Mercury, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So six planets still, right? Retrograde. And so I won't go into too much detail here because I've talked about it in previous videos, but it's, there's, there's this real energy of reviewing, going back over, of feeling a little bit stuck and not able to move forward, even though, even though at the same time, there can be this feeling of like busyness and chaos, but it's the busyness of not really getting us anywhere significant in many ways. But there's a lot of a lot of stuff happening under the surface, right? When planets are retrograde, it brings those energies inward more. And so when we, near near the end of August and then into the fall, we will feel this shift and lift and um, forward motion happening because the planets starting August 19th, when Mercury goes direct, then other planets will will follow suit um, slowly but surely, right? Including Mars and Saturn. And so they will break up that sort of chaotic stagnation almost that's been happening over the summer, right? And give us the impetus to move forward and to move forward with, with our will, Leo, with our life's purpose, right? And um, we have to remember that the North Node, our collective North Node, the North Node speaks to our our destiny in many ways, right? To our soul's evolution. And so our collective North Node is in Leo right now. And, um, you know, so these eclipses are, are really shining a light on that as well. So, um, again, when, when we're talking, I'm going to show you the chart first before I go into sign by sign. Um, so here's the chart for the eclipse that's happening. Let's see if I can get a little more light on the situation. And um, you're going to see that down here, you're going to have, we have all of these planets in Leo, okay? So there's the sun, there's the moon right beside it, there's Mercury, and there's the North Node that I just mentioned. So there is all of this energy concentrated here in Leo. And then opposite the chart, there's Aquarius, where we have the South Node, right? And um, we have Mars that's about to go back into Capricorn. And there we have asteroid Lilith as well. And what I don't have on this chart that I spoke to is we also have um, asteroid Pallas here. So, and then I mentioned the, um, the square to Jupiter and Capricorn. There's Jupiter and Capricorn right there. So there's Uranus, which has just gone retrograde yesterday and Taurus, right? So that's what the chart looks like. And if you look to where 18 degrees of Leo falls for you in your own chart, you will get a good sense, right, of where this eclipse, this uh, partial sol solar eclipse that's happening on the 11th will be impacting your chart the most, right? And also, like, do you have any, any planets in Leo around the 18 degree mark, sort of like, within you know depends on how big of a what we call an orb or a range you want to use um but somewhere around 18 degrees leo do you have any planets there um or are there any planets or points having particular conversations with where this eclipse is falling in leo for you so squares or or oppositions or conjunctions or trines um 
And since Leo is a fixed sign, the fixed signs will feel the eclipse energy the most, right? So that's Leo Aquarius, obviously, and also Scorpio and Taurus um, will be feeling this quite significantly. And then as we move into the next eclipse cycle, which again just began um, in, in June, Cancer Capricorn, then those those signs, Cancer, Capricorn, which are cardinal signs, and um, Libra, Aries are also cardinal signs. They will start to feel, you know, these these eclipse energies um, in their neck of the woods, kind of thing, and in their in their charts. So, I'm gonna speak now to where the eclipse is happening for you, based on again, most significantly rising sign, right? The rising sign, as I always explain to people when I do chart readings for them, is we need a birth time to know your rising sign, at least a close, you know, close guesstimate. Um, and the rising sign signifies the sign that was on the eastern horizon at the moment of your birth. And so when we do these sort of generalized horoscopes, we can get the most accurate read on the rising sign. So if you know your rising sign, listen for that first and foremost, but you will also get a sense of um, these energies if you listen for your sun sign and your moon sign as well. Because those, the sun, the moon, the rising sign are, are key. It's like the key, it's like the foundation of the personality, right? Again, if I do a personal reading for you, I go into more detail about those. But I'm going to start with Leo because for Leo, this is happening in your first house because the eclipse is happening in Leo, right? So if you have your ascendant in Leo, specifically even around the 18 degree mark, you are really going to, to feel this. And, um, it's, it's really about, it's about you, really. It's about your, um, your physical body. It's about your natural instincts and impulses. Um, it's about how you present yourself out in the world. So you may be feeling some kind of powerful urge for a new beginning there or for a shift in some way in those areas in your life. And um, again, you may not even know right now, right? All these planets are retrograde and such. And, you know, Mercury is retrograde conjunct the, the eclipse. It may feel a little bit like you don't really know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen and you're ready for that change. So, for cancer, it's happening in your second house of your personal resources. Now that can be your money, you know, the money you make and earn. Um, but it's also about more than that. Our resources are anything we possess, really. Um, and it's also about our, like our sense of self-worth is, is the second house. And so... You may be feeling some, again, some kind of, um, you know, need to, to make a change there, to be recognized for who you are, for your worth, um, that kind of thing, right? And then for Gemini, this is happening in your third house of communication and intellect and, uh, and thinking and short distance travel, um, also the relationship you have with your siblings and your your cousins and neighbors that kind of thing and so I was thinking about this for Gemini specifically just just because um the third house is home for Gemini and Mercury which is retrograde you know conjunct the eclipse is the ruling sign of Gemini and so there may be a lot of activity going on um, in terms of, you know, the mind and the thinking about things and um, ideas and communications and, and that kind of thing. And maybe I, this 
this feeling of something new wants to happen there, right? For Gemini. For Taurus, this is in, in your fourth house of your foundations, of your roots and your ancestry and your home and your family of, of origin um, and even your place of living, right? And so for Taurus, there may be newness in this area that wants to spring forth, right? And um, you may really be feeling that you want to step into your own, right? That's very Leonian um, phrase, really. You want to step into your own in that area of life somehow. For Aries, it's happening in your fifth house. And the fifth house is actually the house that is the natural home to Leo. And the fifth house is about things like um, our relationships with children, our own children or children that we work with or have a connection to. It's about our creative, anything we create, our creative projects and pursuits. And, um, you know, anything we're sort of passionate about, anything that's, that's, that's fun and enjoyable in life. And so there may be some, some newness wanting to, um, to be birthed here in this area of life. And so, you know, consider, consider, you know, how that might be playing out for you. For Pisces, this is happening in your sixth house. And this is the house of your daily affairs, like the work you do on the day to day, right? Um, the daily tasks, whether it be in your job, outside the home or things related to to working in the home um how you are in service to others it can have to do with uh interestingly i'll just give you a personal anecdote here again to illustrate how this can play out right and in a simple simple way in real life so i'm a pisces sun so um you know the sixth house as i was just talking about rules all these things it also happens to be associated with um, small animals, so pets. And we just yesterday adopted a new cat. And so quite interesting how that, and it hadn't even occurred to me until today when I was thinking about this video um, that that was the case, right? And so you can see there's, there's a new beginning there happening. And that's on a very mundane, simple way. Because it's an eclipse, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be this big, huge, dramatic shift or change. It could be. And it, it depends largely on how closely the eclipse is impacting you and your personal chart, right? Um, but for me, there are not any major significant conversations happening, um, aside from maybe my Mercury, which is in Aquarius, but it's still quite far away from the eclipse. Um, but anyway, it, you know, so it may be just these small daily things that, that there will be shifts and changes and new beginnings happening. So for Aquarius, this is happening in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships. So any close personal relationship you have with another person, oftentimes um, contractual relationships like business relationships, marriage partners, that kind of thing, and um, rivalries as well that you have um, with, with other people, right? And so this, this shift or change or new beginning is is wanting to happen in that area of your life you know and keeping in mind the 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 leo aquarius themes that i spoke to at the beginning of the closer to the beginning of the video here um capricorn this is happening in your eighth house and your eighth house it can be a house where we don't necessarily see things happening externally, it could be more on an internal level, like a deep psychological level, there may be shifts and changes happening for you. But it can also have to do on a more day to day mundane level um, with the resources you share with another or with others, uh, money that comes to you through other people or organizations, that kind of thing. Um, also, any sort of hidden hidden information or hidden knowledge, right? And it's, it's the eighth house is the house of like intimacy and intimacy means many things, but, but, but mostly it means like a, a sort of a, any kind of sort of close 
vulnerable relationship you have really, right? And so this is where this eclipse, this Leo eclipse is happening for you, Capricorn. Um, so four more signs to, to go through. Sagittarius is next. Sag, this is happening in your ninth house. And the ninth house is the natural home to Sag. And um, so for you, this can be about your... Um, your belief system in some way, your, even your sense of justice in some way. It can be about your association or connection um, with, with foreign cultures or, or people from other places. Um, it can be about long distance travel or learning about or any kind of long distance connections um, and really about your sense of like your philosophy about, about life. Right. And so this can be where, this is where these, uh, the Leo eclipse is happening for you and you may get a sense of those energies, you know, those something new wanting to happen in that area of life. Scorpio, this is happening in your 10th house, of which is a very public house, right? Um, it's the house of your, that speaks to your highest ambitions and your, your career rather than your, your day-to-day -day job tasks, which is the 6th house. 10th house is more your public persona and, um, again, ambitions and, and your, your, your reputation, that kind of thing. And so... There is a newness brewing there. And with Leo in the mix, it may be that you are really seeking recognition for your efforts in that area of life. Um, or you can feel that changes are happening there. Um, you know, and again, if we if we want to harness the highest vibration of these energies, then think about as I was saying to you earlier in the video, you know, the Leo at its highest vibration, right? The, the royal king or queen and, and the, you know, doing things with authority, but integrity and benevolence and uh, fairness and, and, and courage and all of those, those things. All right, two more to go. Libra, this is happening in your 11th house. Your 11th house is about not only your your future vision for, for your life and the bigger picture kind of thing, but also about your associations with organizations, um, with groups of people, with, with friendships. Um, it can be like the house of philanthropy as well. Um, and so it may be that there is something new that is brewing in this area of life and that, um, you may feel a desire for change in that area or change may just be, you know, happen, may just happen for you and it may be ready to happen and you can kind of feel that in that area of life. Last but not least in this case is Virgo and Virgo, this is happening in your 12th house and um, this is a very spiritual house. Again, it's, it's a house similar to the 8th house in the sense that um, it may not be things that you see on an external or that people see externally so much, but the shifts and changes that want to happen for you can very much be on an internal level. Um, and, and this can be about how we, it can be like our connection to something greater than ourselves. Um, the 12th house, you know, also rules Places, it was, it used to be called the house, one of the things it covered was the house of, of self undoing. And so, you know, which can be things like addictions, um, you know, P Pisces is at home in the 12th house, right? And so, you know, there may be this, this light being shone there that is shining a light on some bad habits and patterns and that kind of thing that really want to shift and change for you. Um, also, 
anything regarding like institutions like hospitals, prisons, um, even, um, you know, I would say things like even, um, long-term care homes, that kind of thing would fall in the 12th house. There may be some shifts and changes happening in, in that regard, but on a more sort of esoteric level, you know, this is really about our connection to something high, something higher and greater than ourselves. It's a, it's also about allowing life to flow and trusting the process and having faith right at the high at the higher vibration having faith in the process and this is really could potentially be very good for virgo because virgo is all about wanting to control things and um, feeling very uneasy about not being in control and so if we can harness these eclipse energies and allow ourselves and I say ourselves because I'm a Virgo rising to to let go of the need for control and to really sort of take a step back and realize that the universe really does have our back right and allow things to unfold um, as they are meant to then this can be really um, it can lighten the load for us in a, in a huge way. All right. So those are the, the 12 signs. And I hope that gives you a little bit of insight as to how this may play out for you. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I will respond to you. Or, you know, you can always email me, um, info at laranewellbarrett.ca or connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. The links to those are below as well. And until I speak to you next week, then I hope you have a really lovely, powerful, positive eclipse in Leo because ultimately this is a positive direction that we're moving in, even though we can feel like we're kind of in the chaos soup right now. Okay, so take care, everybody, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.